Hello friends, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Vasan from Critical Care Medicine, Apollo Main Hospital. Today we are going to see on anatomical localization of stroke. I am going to take on that ischemic part, right. So here we have a first patient, a 70 years old male, a known diabetic and hypertensive, developed a weakness of right side of the body and facial deviation to left after he woke up from sleep. The weakness worsened as the day progressed. History of transient ischemic attack around three weeks back. No other significant history. On examination, the vitals and higher mental functions were normal. In cranial nerve examination, upper and moron neuron type of right facial nerve palsy present. Motor power 2 by 5 in right upper and lower limbs. Plantar extensor on right side. The left power is normal and left plantar is normal again. The sensory system, cerebellar functions and cranium and spine, other systems are normal. So here we have a 70 years old gentleman who had right sided weakness and come to us, right. So how are we going to approach this patient? The functional diagnosis is cerebrovascular accident and right hemiparesis. Hope everyone agree with me. So now we are going to place anatomically where does this stroke come from? Either it should be in the cortex or coronary radiator or internal capsule or the brainstem, right. Since the patient has a right-sided hemiparesis, the insult should be on the left side of the brain. So, the left cortex or left coronary radiator, left internal capsule or left brainstem. What if, if this patient had a stroke in the left cortex? Cortex has its own cortical sensory stimulations. So, if the cortex is involved, the cortical sensation at that particular segment of the body will be lost. But in our patient, it's clearly mentioned that cortical sensations are present. So less likely to have a cortical involvement in this patient. So next is a coronary radiator. How to differentiate an ischemic stroke, whether it's placed in the left coronary radiator or left internal capsule? Kindly have a look at this diagram. If it's going to be at the level of internal capsule, the neurofibers are densely packed in the internal capsule. So any small insult, any small ischemic lesions at this particular area is going to involve both the upper and lower limb fibers equally, okay. Equal involvement is otherwise called as dense hemiparesis. So the term dense actually means equal involvement of upper and lower limb, actually not the severity, right. So what if, if it's a coronary radiator, this segment of the brain is called as a coronary radiator. Have a look at this. The coronary radiator, the fibers are actually dispersed. So, a small ischemic stroke at this region is less likely to affect both the upper and lower limb equally, right. So, our patient had a power of 2 by 5 in both upper and lower limb. This means equal involvement of upper and lower limb. So, more likely to be on the internal capsule. Could this be in the brain stem? If this is present at the brain stem, there are brain stem nucleus. So, those should have been affected. But it clearly mentioned that no other cranial nerves were affected. So, less likely to be brainstem, right. So, we have a cerebrovascular accident patient with right hemiparesis with human type of facial nerve palsy, lesion involving left internal capsule, possibly due to thrombosis. How do we come to a conclusion that this is thrombosis? Either it should be thrombosis or an embolus or a hemorrhage. It's very difficult on a clinical basis to differentiate all these three things. But we can have some clues to point our light towards thrombosis. One is TIA, transient ischemic attack that occurred around three weeks back. And second is this event happened during sleep. So these two phenomena tells us this could be possibly a thrombosis, okay. Then in lenticular striate branch of middle cerebral artery, how do we come to this kind of conclusion? Let's see that in our seminar here. And of course, he's suffering from type 2 diabetes mellitus and systemic hypertension. So this is the arterial supply of brain. Starting from the aortic arch, we can see that uh, the brachiocephalic on the right side gives branches to the right subclavian and right common carotid. And over the left, the left common carotid comes directly from the aorta. It goes up, differentiate into the left internal carotid and left external carotid. And the internal carotid artery bilaterally enters the brain, okay. Can you see this? This part of the circulatory system of brain. So, when the internal carotid artery enters the skull, it get differentiated into, it get branched into anterior cerebral artery, 
and middle cerebral artery okay i'll just zoom this segment of this picture so once the internal carotid artery enters into the skull it get branched into this segment which is called as the middle cerebral artery and this segment is called as the anterior cerebral artery okay so this is middle cerebral artery this is anterior cerebral artery okay so from now onwards whichever major arterial connections we are going to see will be divided into segment 1 and segment 2 by its own divisions let's have a look on that so in anterior cerebral artery this segment is called as a1 and this segment is called as a2 so a1 and a2 is divided by anterior communicating artery okay so a1 and a2 is divided by anterior communicating artery have a look at this picture if there is a thrombus at a1 segment the patient usually is asymptomatic because there is adequate flow from the opposite side which can supply both the a2 segments is it clear from this diagram if one side is blocked one side a1 is blocked adequate blood supply comes from the opposite segment and the patient is usually asymptomatic right so what if if there is a thrombus at the a2 segment if there is a thrombus at the a2 segment that part of brain that is supplied by the a2 goes for ischemia right so we should know what is this a2 segment supply so this is the arterial supply of brain this is the lateral surface this is the medial surface in lateral surface you can see that uh, the yellowish uh, area yellowish painted area is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery and this area is supplied by the middle cerebral artery and this blue segment is by the posterior cerebral artery this is the lateral surface of brain and this is the medial surface of brain where a huge area that's supplied by the anterior cerebral artery and a very very minimal middle cerebral artery and posterior cerebral artery is the blue one 